This is really fun. I'm glad we're able to do this today. I love this shop. We started doing this because of the shop on Wells where I live and I always loved it. It's so quaint. It's right in the neighborhood. It's part of the neighborhood. It's a fixture. And when I walked in here, I hadn't been to this store yet. I thought, wow, the same thing. You're able to replicate kind of that eclectic, eccentric feel. That's right. That feels down to earth when you walk in this wine store. So how did you get started with this? How, what made you want to be in the spirits business? Well, uh, I started a uh, uh, wine shop and liquor shop on 1982, 19, 1989, I should say. And I had few uh, liquor or so, what we call it, you know, nothing like this. Then I always wanted to have something called a boutique wine shop. Something come with a uh, cast iron, a uh, burnt couple, uh, a mahogany um, uh, woods and chandeliers. I want people to come in and feel like they are in not a regular liquor store, they are in a wine shop. And something that when they go to come to my store, they feel like they are in different environment. We give them a service. We give them a different choices. And I wanted them, people comes in and they said, wow, we never see something like that. That's how I started with Galleria Liquors on 2001 on Old Town and since then um, I opened uh, three or four shops called Galleria. They're all the same. Uh, they all have chandeliers and uh, they have uh, burnt coppers as you see, the mahogonies. It just feel like an old school meeting the new schools and uh, some people come over to me and said Benjamin, why do we have to come here? We could go to Benny's, we can go to another wine shop. Why should we come here? And your prices may be a little higher. I understand that. You come here because you get service. Because when you come here, we pay attention to you. We, we walk you around when you're here for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, we walk you through. When you have people coming to you for dinner, and you want some wine, you come to us, we pair those wines to each course what you have. We do not charge you anything because we love to do that. And most of my staff, they are a sommelier, some of them the advanced sommeliers, which is they've been in this business for past 15 years. Wow. And that's what I want. I want service, friendly, neighborhood wine shop, and try and have a lot of other wines and spirits, the bigger store don't have it. The reason, because some of these wines, they only made 500 case, 600 case, you know, entire world. So the only like 30 of them, 40 of them come to this city. So I am one of those wine shops can have a one or two cases. So that's why we are different with others. When you were designing this shop, you mentioned the chandeliers, the burnt copper. Were you trying to replicate something that you've seen in your past or something that you that you envisioned? Not really. Uh, I, I picked up all the colors, which is the colors goes with the wine. The wines is burgundy, red, rich colors. And that's the reason I picked up the, all the rich colors. If you go to any of these cellars uh, in Europe, you go to the old wine shop in Europe, you always see a niche a chandeliers. Okay. And they're not modern chandeliers, I think like this one, the old looking chandeliers. And you see a lot of woods, the old woods, the barrels, the colors, burgundy, dark purple, gold. So that's what I wanted to blend everything together and come up with this coloring, really. Was it hard to build the relationships to bring the, the wine that's only in 500 cases or only a few cases come to Chicago? How was it to build that business? Where did you start? Well, you know what happened is um, I had John Gallo, the owner of Gallo Wines, and uh, I mean, he's huge in the world. He knows everybody. So it's funny you said that about three years ago, uh, some of his salespeople, they told about my shops. They said, John, you should come here. You can look at these. This story is different with others. And, and he comes in with his son. I was really surprised. He sit down and talk to me. And this was like, for me, it's a privilege. Some guy like this, like imagine like some 
real estate mongol come to your store, top guy in the industry, top guy industry. Yeah. you come to the store and give you the compliment and tell me whatever you want, go ahead and do it. So people comes, you see on industry, the winemakers, the old big corporations, the big bosses, the salesmen, they bring them in because they want to sell some showcases. And they always bring it to my store because what they thought about the store was elegant, unusual, beautiful. You don't see that many of them around. All you see is liquor store, liquor store, big bennies, wine shop, but nothing like this. I have everything. I have look, I have the class, I have the wine, I have the personality, and I do have the service. So to me, it was privilege. He came to me and two weeks later, his son came back again. And he said, sorry, my father cannot come. And you know, what can we do for you? And that was it. I mean, this is my whole experience. I was really moved by that. You said something interesting about spending more. And my experience with Galleria, you're a few blocks from my house and a few blocks from my house is Plum. And you both have Mars beer, which I absolutely love. And I saw it in both and you're like a dollar more. But I love walking into your shop. Right? I like the walk. I, wa I like to walk in. Sometimes you're sampling something, but every time I go in, I feel like I might learn something. I might see a bottle I haven't seen before that I'm going to get some education when I walk in. And you're not going to get something like that elsewhere. And it's definitely something that's different. Absolutely. Absolutely. You're definitely right. When you come out, come and if you're a beer lover or any other passion you have towards any of spirits, uh, uh, wine, and everything, we just we have certain people that are really good on beer one guy is good on beer one guy is in wine one in spirits and whatever they're like for example I'm, you talk about beer pie forks you know we've been carrying for six years mm -hmm. and they are really small small uh brewery and they come to us first is that, you said pipe works pipe works. is that in portland uh is in Chicago. It's in Chicago. Okay. Yes, they're all in Chicago. I'm okay. just indoor. Or Mars Beer, for example. Yeah. I mean, they all come to us, and and whatever they re new release us, they come to us. We connect to customers. They come in, said Benjamin, Mark, Michael, what 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 is new this week? Okay, the new one's this one. The new one is this one. We have some brewery called a scratch um, sketchbook. These people brew the uh, beer on Wednesday and deliver it to us on Friday. That's awesome. I mean, it's so fresh. They have some of the stuff they call morning beer. So it's a beer with espresso. When you're drinking it, it's just like, it's another feeling, another, another experience. Oh my God, it's a beer, it's a coffee, it's Who makes espresso. that? A sketchbook, we have it in here. Can we see it? Can yes, it yes. This is the one. So it's Hubbard's Cave? Yeah. Okay. That's really cool. Yeah, I mean, this is it's stuff right, like that. Right here in Niles. Yeah. And what's exactly. this go for? This is 17 bucks. 17 bucks. Pack. Yeah, because uh, for the tall boys. For the tall boys, yeah. and and they're a high alcohol, and um, I got a lot of people come say said we go to Bernie's and nobody's they even look at us. They go to Walgreens, maybe Walgreens is dollar cheaper or so. I understand that, but nobody. No Look one should buy wine at Walgreens. <laughs> Nobody should. And at Benny's, you're almost overwhelmed. Yes. You're like, uh, where should I go? And it's kind of, depending on where you are in the city, it's kind of far. Yeah. I love your locations because you're on a main street. I'm paying for the premium. A little yeah. extra, it's like a buck, right? Not a big deal. It's not a big deal. And you're yeah. gonna get the service. So if someone comes in here and they have a meal that they're preparing, how does that work? I mean, do they tell you what the dish is? Yes. Do they tell you where it's exactly, from? Exactly, exactly. They come and said, uh, Benjamin or whoever to, to take care of them, they said, we have, in a, you know, uh, some uh, uh, salads and some salmons and this and that. Also, well, you start with, you go with rosé if you want, you go start with uh, uh, some uh, poulet fousse or some sancerre and, and then, okay, I have a steak. You want to meal back is nice, full body cab is nice. Then we go some Bordeaux. I mean, we have all options. You can give it to them and they can pick up things. And again, we want, we might be a little expensive dollar or two, but if you buy a box like six pack, or, or, the, or the 12 packs, you get 10% off. Okay. And now we have this program, which is we want to be very aggressive. Every Monday and Tuesday, you buy two bottles, you get 10% off. Okay, nice. So, and that, and because again, we are neighborhood wine shop. I want people always think of us, I want to support these people because yes. they're neighborhood wine shop. 
And I mean, you're right off the L. This is it's so cool. Yes. Is that door functional? Yes, of course. So you could actually go in through that door, yeah, get so. off the train, <laughs> yeah. come straight in, <laughs> grab your drink for the evening, exactly. head, head right home. Exactly. Oh, they can call us and you know, put these things away. They give us a credit card or whatever, or we have them all in the pack. We suspend the transaction in our computer. They come in, they give the name, you stop it, boom, out. In That's really nice. Yeah, so all of this is included. Um, yeah. Did you say you had sommeliers working here? Yeah, we have. We had uh, a couple of. I have a, a gentleman over there. His name is Michael. He's been this industry. So Michael. He, Good. Even he, he been in this industry since he was 16 years old. He was uh, uh, stocking. 14. <laughs> he was stocking on Zuberman. You know Zuberman? The, no. Yeah. What? Well, probably. It was one <laughs> of the oldest liquor shops. Uh, they were on Grand. Benny's bought them out. Okay. So. And he was working there, and he has all. Is that where things. the Benny's location is now? On yes, Grand? on the ground. So they took that was called Zimmerman. Zimmerman, yeah. yeah. Okay. They took over Sam's Club, Sam's also. I remember yeah. that. Yes. Yeah, yes. that was was that Sam's before that. Yes. Okay. Yeah, no, Sam's was on um, uh, where, where it is right now. Okay. Uh, on uh, uh, South, not Southport, uh, Sheffield. Sheffield, yeah, yeah, that's right there. So uh, yeah, we have people in here with knowledge, and uh, more than average, and we can help you out. There's, you know. That's what we do the best. That's nice. Yeah. So a lot of people are getting things delivered today. Do you have a delivery service? Of course, of course, we do have it. We've been doing Dribbly, believe it or not, since 1989 when I opened my first store. I used to deliver to, I used to have a store on uh, Ohio and a state called Benz, B-E-N-Z, like I said, it's Benz, yeah. a wine shop. And uh, we used to deliver to Oprah, to be honest with you, on Lakeshore Drive on 1989, 1990. Dom Perignons and everything else. So I was one of the few stores we were delivering. I wish I would uh, get a pattern or something. <laughs> Kick. Need more operas? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, get a pattern of deliveries. Nobody yeah. else can do it. So we should have done it. Whatever. You learn and you, you live and learn, I should say. Yes. Why'd you start this business? What made you want to come to Chicago and do this? Uh, well, you know, I came to the Chicago in, in 1979. I went to the school in the daytime. And at night, I was working in restaurant business. I was working in a pump room, famous pump room. Mm -hmm. And uh, 1980, 1981, uh, they had this store, it was called pump room, and it was huge at the time. All these actors and actresses used to go there. And they had these things called boot one. It's like the red phone in there, like France Sinatra. Uh -huh. And everybody used to come there, Richard Gere. And I was blessed to see all these people. And I would go in the daytime uh, to the school, got graduated, but uh, couldn't find a job. So I figured, why not have something I have a passion for, you know, spirits, wine, beer. And since I've been in this restaurant business for a long time, and I figured maybe have something I can be useful for this community, have some wine shop and spirits and all. That's what I decided. I've been doing this since uh, 1989. And what were you doing before that? Uh, I was uh, I was uh, driving limo at the same time. I had some restaurants, uh, fast food joint. I had some, uh, what do you call, uh, uh, video shop, you know that- uh, like, a, like a video, like you rent a video? Yes, yeah. rent a video. So yeah. <laughs> that was a long time ago. Yes, I had that for uh, one year. Didn't work out. Blockbuster was at the time, <laughs> you remember that? Yeah. So uh, then it didn't work out and then I, then uh, I walked in the restaurant, have a restaurant, have a few lemos, a medallion, and then I f finally wanted to have something like this. Then I had like three shops at the time. And then you lose a, um, um, a real estate, people buy your real estate. So I had to move on, go to different location. So I've been in this business since 1989 and I'm really happy what I've done. So yeah. that's a great segue into the Wells location because yeah. that's one of the reasons I reached out to you. I saw the notice go up and they're going to tear that building down? Yeah, they're going, what we're going to do, we're going to tear the building down and we're going to put like three or four uh, apartments on the top. Then I'm coming back again. Oh, perfect. Of course, because the building- That's great. Is, I was yeah, concerned you were going to yeah, lose that spot. No, no, no. P people, yes, we've been there since 2002. Yeah. And this location, we've been here for 2007. So now I have all these years behind me. I have a very good track record. Obviously, a lot of places open and close. So I've been in this business for a long time, so I know what people are looking for. So, no, 
we go and come back again, nice and stock. We did the same thing in here. This place, I was here for like 14 years. Then they bought the place, they remodeled it, and I came back again. As you say, everything okay. is nice and I new. thought so. When did you do this remodel? It was off for uh, nine months. And we just got back here on uh, beginning of October. Okay, perfect. Because Adam and I were talking about that. We passed the place and he was going to park. I was like, no, this isn't it. Like, because it looks completely different from the outside. Yeah. It looks beautiful, everything yeah. you've done in here. Yeah. What was that process like being closed for that long and, and not operating? Oh, uh, well, uh, I was again uh, operating different things. Mm -hmm. I was doing different stuff, but you know, I knew uh, I'm coming back in here and uh, I locked a new look. Uh, I'm a little smaller here, but as you see, I got the new floor, yeah. new ceilings, and uh, new ideas. I think I want to go with a little fresher look now. Uh, old world meeting the new world. Yeah. That's what I want to do from now on. And we are process opening two more, and on uh, Logan uh, 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 School area, okay. and also around uh, Ashland and um, uh, Chicago Avenue. Okay. So we are uh, trying, <laughs> Find so out. West Town, Logan Square. So you've kind of conquered more east. Yes. You're trying to work further west now. Yeah, to well, those yeah, because I have a lot of people that come to me, to be honest with you. And they said, I wish I had a, I'm coming from Logan Square. I'm coming from west. I wish I was still like that around my house because yeah. everything you see is a, one of those raggedy liquor store and they have nothing. They're cheap wines, uh, dusty wines yeah. on, the t on, on the shelves, uh, some of the stuff. And why not? I mean, it's in Chicago, it's really rare to see a true wine shop. And usually they're much smaller. I mean, usually it's, you walk in and you're in it. Yes, right, yeah. And then you're just surrounded by wine. You talk to the guy or the woman and get their opinion, tell them what you're doing, what you're looking for, grab a bottle and go. Here you can actually walk around, explore what's on the counter, see everything that's on the racks. It's really nice. Well, as you see here, uh, we have five or six tables over here. So I figured, make it easy for everybody else. Some people don't want to spend more than $16, $17 bottle of wine. I don't blame them, you know. Yeah. You're your student or you just got married or whatever, for reason. And we do have a lot of nice wine for $16, $17. And most of the wine we have, you don't find it in the, in the grocery store. Mm -hmm. So that's why the people come to us. So all these tables you see here from all the uh, domestic, imported, uh, South Africa and everything else, all designated under sixteen, seventeen dollars. And we want to spend more money. You go on the wall. Okay. Simple. So right in the middle, here's more of the value wines. This exactly. And the walls, something more expensive. Oh, exactly. And so this is the the flow of this uh, story is all about like that. And on the uh, beer section, we have a sixteen dose cooler. So it's pretty big. Yeah. And and we have over maybe a 120 different beer in here. There's a lot of beer. Yeah, a lot of beer. And uh, again, they all come in and go. And, uh, and what we do is people asking for new beer. If we don't have it, we take the numbers, we search it, we bring it in and we call them up, say, listen, I have your wine, I'm in beer. Come on back next week and pick it up. So that's called sort of a relationship we make with our customers. That's nice. Yeah. So you mentioned John Gallo earlier. We were just talking about value wines. When I think of Gallo, I think value wines. Do they do higher end stuff? Oh yeah, definitely. What they did was they were doing a lot of gala and then he, a smart businessman, that's what it is. So they, they went to Napa, they bought all this high end uh, wine. Vineyards? Vineyards. And, and, and they're like a couple of them like uh, uh, Bonavista and a bunch of other stuff. So, and they're producing them under their management. And who's better than them? They have all this experience yeah. about the wines and they know how to make it and how to sell it, how to market it. So no, yeah, you're right, absolutely. Uh, but but they move down just like everybody else. If you want to survive, you have to just go up and up and up. Yes, that's what they did, yeah. So you came to America to come to school, is that right? Yeah, I went to school back here. I went to the college called Loop College. Okay. Then after that, it was um, uh, Harold Washington, uh -huh. you know, the ex-mayor, you know. And uh, uh, got graduated from there. And then um, I went to look around the jobs. I was I was making like about at the time it was like twenty thousand, twenty five thousand dollars a year. Then I start working in the restaurant and driving uh, limos. I was making like forty thousand dollars a year. So I figured maybe I do this better right now to make the money. I was young, a lot of experience, and uh, I was uh, playing a lot of soccer. That's my passion, and um, I had more time to travel and do that. 
uh, having my own job so I can travel and do that. So that's what I, I did it, yeah. How was it to start this business? Where did you get the startup capital? Did you bootstrap it from yourself? Did you get a loan? No, I, I worked uh, about 10 years. Um, saved up about um, $180,000 on saving. Then I opened my uh, first shops in 1989 on uh, Ohio Street. It's called Ben's, which is just closed right now, obviously. Then uh, after that, I bought a couple of more wine shops, you know, because beginning is very difficult when you get the shop. Then after that, you know, you've got credit lines, you know, and all of this. So is it easier to buy an existing business and build from that business? Is that what you were doing? No, I didn't. Uh, I wanted to put my uh, uh, signature stuff in there. So I wanted to open whatever design I wanted to do. I didn't want anything like it was there before. Uh, it's obviously, it's much difficult with the licensing and everything else. I was about to ask, what is the licensing like when you're selling liquors and spirits? You have uh, two licenses, one from the city of Chicago, one for the states, and you renew it every other, uh, every other year, the Ch city of Chicago, but the state every year you have to do. Okay. Then, you, then you have different licensing, like food license, then you have a tobacco license, general licenses. I have them all, so, but, you know, we are here, we have a little bit, you know, food, which is not much, <laughs> uh, candies and all. We're going to have some snacks. cheeses. Yeah, snacks, yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, it's difficult, but uh, right now it's more difficult because of the COVID, unfortunately, yes. because you cannot open anything else. Okay. How do you find the next wine to put on the shelf? Are people coming here and selling that to you? Are you going out and pursuing it? What does that process look like to bring the best products into your store? Well, a lot of people would come in, all the salespeople, they come with the winemakers, and, and they come in, we taste the wine. Everything in here, you see, the wine, we, we all tasted it. So we're gonna taste everything today? We tasted everything. Uh -huh. <laughs> and make sure everything is good. And some of these wines, we have, we, we forgot about it, like four years, we have it in here, then we put it, revisit, so we taste them again. So anything we don't like, we don't sell it. And some of these stuff is said, oh, it's nice, but I don't like it. I don't, we don't sell it. Again, my management, my team, my management, we all sit down with the beer and everything else. Oh, this is brand new. You want it? No, I don't, because I don't think you fit us our portfolio. So this is, uh, yeah, they come to us, they represent their case, just like everything else, you know, new car or nothing. This is this. So we taste them, we like them, we like the packaging. The packaging is very important to us too, because look, a lot of people, to be honest with you, they buy by the package, the look of the bottle. Yeah. So that's why packages is like, like something like this, something like that, as you see. When, I, when I'm shopping for wine and I don't know what to get, I always just look for the worst label. <laughs> I'm like, okay, they didn't have to spend any money on that or any time because the wine is good enough. Yeah, yeah. So have you ever done any type of subscription service or like boxed particular wines for people every month? Oh, oh, you mean the, uh, uh, you call it um, uh, club or something, yeah. is that right? Yeah, wine club. I have not done it, to be honest with you, but uh, that's a funny thing you said. You should do that. Yeah, we are, we are thinking about it. I was talking to my uh, management group and uh, uh, we want to know, we want to have like two different options for two different level of people, mm -hmm. what they want. I mean, we could have something for like, $28, $29 for a couple of bottles of wine, and so, but some people want to spend $60 or $70 for two bottles of wine every month. So we're gonna have a two group of that for everybody else, uh, for whole, uh, for everybody. Uh, I'll uh, be your first customer. Because <laughs> you know what, I, I love it too, because if I had a, a client that was moving into this neighborhood, I could just buy that subscription for them for six months, a year, whatever it is. Oh, that's fantastic, right? I never thought of and, that, yes. And then I'm done. It's a great gift. It supports a local business. And if they're near here, they can just walk and pick it up. Exactly. I think you, it's a very good point. I never thought of that. And uh, yeah, we are trying to work on it. And we're trying to put something together. Hopefully uh, January is a very small, uh, very slow start for us. So this, uh, by end of the month, we go and come up with a plan for the wine club. Nice. Yeah, right. really cause wine club. You so let me know. I'm gonna be your first of customer. Course, okay. Of course, of course. So how'd you pick this location? Well, uh, uh, to me, it was, uh, when I picked this location, this location actually, to be honest, it was a wine shop before. Okay. And, um, and the landlord of this location comes to me on 2007 
uh, he comes to the uh, Galleria on Wells, he said, I love your look, I love your location. Uh, why don't you come and you have it in my land? I mean, in my land. Uh, I want to, I want you to come here, have a wine shop in the Southport area. Mm -hmm. So I came down here and I see all these nice bars, all these beautiful condos and all. And I came down here and the guy was, which is the, had the license, he said he wants to leave, so he left. I came here, I brought it down, make it look really beautiful. It was bigger than this, about 3,000 square feet. How much do you have now? Right now it's about 22. 22, okay. Yeah. So from then we took over and uh, it was a success right from the beginning because we were close to the Wrigley area. Yeah. A lot of, lot of cops fans. They always come here. This is the stop. You grab stop. here, grab That's your booze, right. yeah. and make the walk. And also a lot of Cubs players. Yeah. They came down here. There's a number in the neighborhood. Oh, yeah, you, exactly. So we, we, I saw a lot of them. They come to uh, Dubai again. <laughs> it's funny. One day, one of the guy was uh, uh, the pitcher. Big guy, strong. What's his name? Uh, huh? Big Schwab. Guy. Schwab, yeah. Sure. yeah. He comes down here. Yeah, yeah, and he comes in here. He had this Superman T-shirt on. He's huge, you know, for picture. And I, and I said, what can I do for you, sir? And I recognize him. He said, well, I want to go to this uh, uh, boat and I need some champagne. And I said, okay, but uh, you don't really need, need that big of expensive champagne to take to the boat because, you know, you're just going to- No going to appreciate it. He said, no, I don't care. I want Dom Perignon. So he bought seven Dom Perignon. <laughs> <laughs> To take it to take it to the boat, <laughs> which is why not? Even if the money, I, I wouldn't give it. It was good for us. And he said, "Oh, I like, I like. You always come here. You always deliver to me, supporting me with that stuff." Which is, it was good, good, good feedback. Yeah. For your other locations, what have been some of the struggles that you've had getting it off the ground or just sustaining the business? Well, again, um, uh, standing in business because, uh, if, if for example, on uh, North Avenue. My North Avenue location, if you look at the one radius of one mile, I have nine liquor shop. Everybody can go you there. Have nine competitors? No. Walgreens, Fox Central across the street, uh -huh. Jewels, Potash, Plum Market, another Jewel. So if you look at the one mile, so everybody got That's a lot. You're right. Yeah. I'd say you have like three real places, maybe Foxtrot, yeah. definitely Plum, and then you. Yeah. yeah. And, and then, I, then, I, then I said to myself, how can, obviously you go do some uh, uh, customer at the beginning of the uh, people open up the new shops because people don't want to go with it. But then that was our struggle, how to keep the customer back because the coming in is easy. Keep the coming back and that's the key. Just like for other businesses. Yeah. And that's why service, selection and being a friend and People comes in, know them by the first name, and and we do credit some people. They wanted some credit. We always carry them up. You know, a lot of delivery section, immediate delivery. A lot of these places do not have it. People call ten minutes later. Do we have the wine or yeah. spread in there? So immediate delivery. We do that. So that's why you were successful all these years. And earlier you mentioned you just started with social media. You're really building that platform up. That's good. It'll be huge for you to, to reach a younger audience, but also stay in touch with all your existing audiences. Yes. Yeah. You should really have like a mailing list, like an email list. Yes, yes. It's, it's, it's difficult to get people's email. I mean, it's kind of weird. Give, give them an incentive. Yeah. Offer 10% off right now, sign up. Right, right? now, right now. you just need it once. Yeah. <laughs> right now we're doing the same thing with uh, Facebook and everything else. Mm -hmm. They can go on Facebook and uh, just pop, uh, click it in, they get 5%. Okay. We have that one and we've been doing it. It's not bad. Some people like it, some people don't, some people don't care. But I think it's building it up. Yes, yeah. I think you're absolutely right. It's a good place to start. Yeah, of course. Of course, yes. Yeah, that. Yeah. During any of the looting, were you affected at all? Uh, not on this location. On Wales, we were. Yeah, I saw. Uh, yeah, and they came in, they took some of our high-end stuff. They're like, well, not fine. And it was a sad because you know, I, yeah, I had insurance and all, but some of this bottle I had, it was 15, 17 years old. You could not find in the world. It was about $25,000, Baltimore. Uh, he had a birth certificate. He had the little cages. They, they took knew what it. they were looking for. Yeah, of course. So they're the, all the high-end. Air nice. Cognac. 
uh, bottles, the hand printed, you know, with the famous artist, French artist. So they took all this stuff, but again, it's all sentimental value. It's just like picture on the wall for you. You come every day, you look at it. You know, it's an attachment. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, your house burns and that burns too. Yeah. I know you're going to get a value for it, but it's attachment. You'd rather have the thing. Of course. The value is always there. You just want the item because yes. that's, that's part of you. It's yeah. part of your history. Exactly. exactly. But uh, other than that, uh, God bless. Uh, we've been doing really good. So people supporting us, people are very nice. I hope this COVID thing goes fast. Yeah. How old were you when you came to the States? Um, 20. 20? Yeah. Where'd you come from? I, I came from London. I was there for uh, six years. Uh, before that, I'm originally from Iran. Okay. Tehran, the, the capital. And uh, I had a lot of culture behind me. And um, when I came here, I'm trying to keep my culture together. Um, uh, loyalty is very important to me. Friendship is very important to me. Family is very important to me. So I want to pass that to all my friends, to all my two sons I have, to all my friends and everybody else, my employees. Most of my employees have been working with me uh, for past 10 years, 15 years. And that shows you something. Because again, loyalty is very important. So try and help them up in the difficult uh, times and try and be their friend and their boss. And it's a hard mix. Yeah, your harvest. Some people can take advantage of it, and some people they like it. So Do you have children work in the business? No, no. I don't really want my children to come here. You want them, them to have their own success, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Don't do that. You hear that from a lot of entrepreneurs. Yes, yeah. They could have the most thriving business. They want their children to do something else, so they can discover themselves through that process. They said the second generation is a 65, 70% failure. Yeah. And third generation is goes to 85 to 90. So that's why it's very difficult. Mm -hmm. At least, you know, maybe you're a doctor or, a, or anything else, you can take your daddy's office. Yeah. So you can get all the patients, but I don't know about that. Yeah. Even that is difficult, you know? Mm -hmm. Where do you live yourself in the city? Oh, uh, I live in Old Town. Okay. I've been living in Old Town since uh, 2001, but I live around Lakeshore Drive, that area, Old Town, uh, near North, uh, since 1980. Okay, wow, yes. long time. Yeah, long time. I love the location. It's, it's a lovely location. You live there now too, is yeah. that right? Yeah. Yeah, the, the geography wise is center of everything. Mm -hmm. You off the crowded area, which is Michigan Avenue, but again, you're 10 minutes away from it. That's my favorite part. That's what I tell everyone. Uh, where I live specifically, like between North and Division, it's a neighborhood. No one goes there unless you're meant to be there. Tourists aren't walking around, yeah. but two blocks away is Michigan Avenue if you yeah. want it. Yeah, I, I, that's what I like to put my uh, shops always in the neighborhoods. Because look at that, Don. If you look at a lot of people walking around, and this is even winter, summertime is even more yeah. rusted. So that's what I like. I like, we have wine tasting in here. We have uh, classes, wine classes. We that's have. fun. Yes, yeah, so people would come in and, you know, pass by, they see the wine uh, classes or they see that they come in. They say, come in here, taste something else. I mean, I don't like to go to the summer like west, very, very like old, very, very like north, very north or very west side. I want to be like Iran neighbors you know yes. kids stolers that's what i like to see you know that's why my success is i pick up location i don't mind to pay high rent but what's the point if you have a low rent and you have no customers <laughs> you pay for the traffic that's right yeah, yeah, exactly it's, a, it's mathematics it's yeah. simple as that there's there's always a good investment in a great location yeah. and a southport location like yeah. this i mean you're kind of as good as it gets and hopefully you're getting a little discount because of the train yeah you're right on top of it no we used to before when the, everything was okay uh -huh. i mean early morning people go to train over the stuff here they bought yeah. the stuff for the store for the for the offices it, they that's home. a great point are you paying more because you're at the train or less because you're at no, the train? no you're more a little bit more okay. this area this location this is spot in southport this is the best location in the software. Why? Because I'm right next to the train. Everybody yes. come here. And what is better than that? And you you're know? right in the middle because you have Addison over there, you yeah. have Belmont over there. You're smack in between right yeah. off Roscoe yeah. pretty much. Yeah. So location, same thing with the North Avenue. Right, not right by the old town area, mm -hmm. right next to uh, uh, Gold Coast. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, it's kind of nice where you are 
because if you were further down wells, further south on wells, yeah. you'd be closer to Plum. That's right? right. And if you're any further north, there's less foot traffic over yeah. there. Yeah. I feel like you're right in between. If you're in Old Town, convenient. If you're in the Gold Coast, convenient. It's very easy to get to. That's the reason I bought that place. I knew, I knew it was this. You see, yeah, that's it. So are you offering any specials today for anyone that watches this? Of course, of course. Whoever comes in and tell your show or your name and everything else, they get 10% off. Okay, great. So they'll yeah. mention Graft right here at the counter. That's right. Get 10% off. 10% off. Fantastic. Yeah. Anything else you want to leave with today? Not really. Uh, I think we uh, covered everything else. And uh, we just, as I said, uh, we're going to have a lot of specials this month coming up. We're going to have a wine classes coming in pretty soon and uh, how are you gonna do that inside with everything going on well we're gonna have a, a few uh uh it's just like what we're sitting down here uh -huh. person can stand over there and you have a small group like four people or five people distance and you can talk and you know again with the mask on and everything else and we have a patient to the ten days it's only like one hour and most likely it's educational things you read about the wines you you take all your notes and you buy the wine, you get percentage off, and you go home and you give us your feedback and everything else. That's what you want to do. I like that. Do you know when you're doing it? Well, we probably do it by the third week of um, uh, January. We okay. have to find out what's going on. And again, um, you know, people just tired of sitting at home all the time. Yes. I mean, what the restaurant is not there. Though. Yeah. And. There's it's so many cold. great restaurants on this block. Yeah. And some are closed. Yeah. You can't oh, go visit yeah, those right now. It's a good thing to just come out for like 45 minutes, one hour. You know, we make it maybe smaller. And with the old safety precaution, of course, distancing and everything else. And the glasses, you know, you cannot share it. Yeah, you can have it on. And usually people come in with the couples. So when you come with your wife, girlfriend, so you know about your germs and whatever. <laughs> so it, three couples is plenty. You know? So if someone wants to learn more information, you have that on your social? On we go and have that, yes. That. yes. Okay, exactly. exactly. We'll find out about it then. Of course. Great. Right. Thanks for your time today. Of really course. It. Thank you very you much. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.